Now, at a first glance, this may look like your typical Lights of America 50 watt high pressure sodium or 42 watt Florex compact fluorescent wall pack. But wait a minute, what's that in here? I know they don't come with this lamp normally. Well, this is a Philips Sox E 18 watt low pressure sodium lamp. Now, those of you who have seen my videos might have seen this in action in a previous video I have titled Low Pressure Sodium Sox E Startup at Dusk. That was when I first got this lamp and uh, I didn't have a fixture for it so what I did was I took this uh, cookie tin and just zip tied it in there using this as a reflector and this was mounted on the end of a yardstick which I stuck out my window. Worked pretty good as a reflector and lit up my backyard. Throw that down. Since then I decided I wanted to put it in an actual fixture and I decided to choose a wall pack fixture. My inspiration for this came from the Norelco mini socks that was available in the 1980s for $99. This article, um, I got it from a 1982 August popular science magazine. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought this uh, on clearance for $25 and just the box for it right here is the packaging for the low pressure sodium bulb. It started life as a 42 watt Florex but as you can see I've taken the ballast and the socket out of it and put my own lamp in it. Now the ballast I'm using is a Fulham Workhorse 2 compact fluorescent ballast for lamps up to 20 I think it's 22 watts, I believe. It's uh, inside the top compartment and I need to actually take the fixture apart further to show it to you. Okay, so you release these four clips in the corners and then you could lift this part up and off. Kind of hard to do with one hand. There you go. And uh, here's the full ham workhorse two ballast that I'm using to drive this lamp. Let's see. Well, it can actually go up to a maximum of 35 watts. Maximum current 0.33 amps or 330 milliamps. 120 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, open circuit, 600 volts instant start. Low pressure sodium lamps uh, in the lower wattages, like this 18 watt lamp, have uh, similar current characteristics to compact fluorescent lamps of a similar wattage. That's why this uh, fluorescent ballast is able to drive it. Now in order to get this to work, I had to parallel the two red wires coming out of the ballast uh, and then just uh, yellow wires hooked up to the other terminal. I tried it with one red wire before, but it only ran this lamp at 13 watts instead of uh, its full 18 watts. I originally didn't have this uh, BY22D bayonet socket, so what I did was I just soldered a few uh, pieces of wire directly to the contacts on the cap and just had it hooked up that way but since then I've now uh, gotten the socket for it. Let's see if I could uh, take the lamp off further. And let's see, uh, grab that, push and turn. That turns off. See the cap and uh, the whole
hole in this uh, top plate was just big enough to hold it in by friction when I slid, flipped it onto the neck. So I could uh, flip this off. And here you go, there's the bulb. And there's the rest of the setup. I still need to properly mount this so that I can actually replace the lamp without having to take the whole fixture apart. And then I can just enlarge this hole. And there you go. That's my low pressure sodium wall pack. Let's slide her up. I got a cord and plug attached to her so I can just plug it into the socket. Starts off with that neon orange glow. And she's going to take a little while to warm up. Let's uh, speed up the video. Okay, it's been over 15 minutes since I first lit the lamp, and it should be at full brightness just now. I've placed some objects of different colors near the light, and one of the first uh, things you'll notice is you can't tell what color things are. One of the main disadvantages of low pressure sodium lamps, and probably one of the reasons why they didn't make it big in the U.S. was the lack of color rendering. As you can see, uh, objects that are color or black and white just pretty much look the same underneath the low pressure sodium lamp. I'll tell you what they are though. Um, that Philips logo is supposed to be blue. This is red on top of the super glue. The printout I showed earlier is actually black and white and of course that pack of color pencils are different colors but they all look the same. So that's uh, one disadvantage, but it is an advantage to astronomers. Uh, even though they didn't make it big in the U.S., uh, there are some areas uh, nearby here in California, mainly North San Diego County, uh, the city of Temecula, and in Riverside County, the city of Hemet and nearby areas. Since they're so close to the Palomar Observatory, they use low pressure sodium lamps in their street lights. Since the astronomers can easily filter out the monochromatic single wavelength. So that's uh, one advantage uh, for the astronomers. The other is uh, for the little bit of power I'm using, 18 watts, it puts out a lot of light. You can't really tell how bright it is uh, f through the camera, but it's supposed to be 1800 lumens, which is a little bit brighter than a average uh, 100 watt incandescent bulb, yet it only uses 18 watts. That's uh, about 100 lumens per watt, which is better than some even some LEDs that are out there. Of course, uh, the technology is catching up with the LEDs and some of them are a little bit brighter and more efficient in terms of lumens per watt than the low pressure sodium lamp and you can tell what color things are. So I guess that's pretty much it. Let's uh, turn the white lights back on and you can see uh, what colors the objects are now. There you go. A 
over and out.